the feature cam has a new license option that sits somewhere between the 2.5D and the three, full 3D milling. If I go to my valuation options, you'll see I've actually turned on 2.5D and what we call 3D light. You'll also note that the 2.5D milling is a prerequisite for this, although I have turned on additional options for feature recognition and the 5-axis positioning. So in this example, I'm just going to load in an empty file first of all, just to access my browser and then load this 3D light example. So what we have here is we have uh, what we call a throttle body. So this attaches to the air intake of a, of a car on, on the engine and this actually controls the airflow into the engine uh, through the use of a butterfly throttle valve inside this throttle body. Now what you'll also notice is as we look at the actual surfaces here we can see we've got a uh, convergent divergent type nozzle where the air is uh, sort of brought towards the throttle at the narrowest uh, part of the tube. Now in the case of this part the majority of this part is actually prismatic so most of the operations on this part can be done with some kind of uh, two and a half D operation. So if I run through the simulation we'll note this. So I'm going to turn on 3D simulation and play the simulation. So the part has finished simulating. If I just rotate this round and just highlight, so we've got to machine the back area and the front area here in terms of where the airflow goes. So traditionally, what we would have had to do is actually create a maybe a side operation here, perhaps extract some of the curves along here to get a cross section. But what if, for example, we wanted to spiral machine this or perhaps even uh, point the tool down the surface and actually produce some kind of uh, gas flow of this region as well. The only way we can do this is through surface machining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this surface here, I'm going to go into the new feature wizard, and I'm going to select surface milling my surface is selected and you'll notice under the strategy tab I have uh, a reduced number of strategies compared to 3D milling. So I have parallel, isoline and 2D spiral for finishing and I have Z-level roughing and parallel roughing. So I'm going to choose a Z-level rough, select next, I'm just going to highlight this as a 3D pocket, go with the default tool choice and say finish. I've now got my uh, milling operation inside there for roughing. If I go down to my list here, you'll notice, if I just pull the part view up, you can see I've got my surface milling operation here, is that first one. If I just go back into the properties of this, rather than actually create a new operation, I'm just going to do the same operation based on uh, this single surface. and say add a new operation. And this time I'm going to say isoline got my surface selected, go with the default boundary options and say finish. So I've now got two operations inside my process list. For the isoline I'm just going to change my surface control. So at the moment you can see we're looking at uh, the bottom here. I'm going to move the tool vertically down this shape. So I'm going to change my position So we're now moving down the model, apply, and say OK. So I've now created an isoline operation and a Z-level roughing here to do a 3D milling operation on this surface. So just to highlight, as I simulate again, I'm also going to turn on the back features as well. 
So I've got a, the outlet on the back there. And I'm just going to play this simulation. So the key things here are 3D light allows the user to uh, generate 3D milling operations, so both the Z-level roughing and the parallel roughing operation, and also isoline, parallel finishing, and 2D spiral finishing. But this is restricted to a single surface at any one time. So we can have multiple operations, but only single surface operations. So now you can see the completed part with our isoline machined choke area of the throttle body.